Does DICE actually listen to the Battlefield community? This is a question that crosses my mind at least once a day when I scroll through my own comment sections and my Twitter feed. Members of the wider community often leave comments on my videos, responding to new changes, new features that don't address their concerns, which with such a huge game like Battlefield is hardly surprising. There are so many different types of players who place different features and mechanics higher in their order of importance than other people do in their but during Battlefield 1's life throughout its DLCs, I really do think we can pick out a few points that prove over time that DICE has listened to the community, especially when we're seeing significant changes made in Battlefield 5. Of course, waiting for the next major title to implement changes is really not ideal when the player base is still playing the current title, but sometimes the tech available with the current game isn't able to support the extended features that players really want access to. But anyhow, here's six features where I believe DICE has addressed the concerns of the Battlefield community with this brand new title. A massive thank you to Flackfire today for letting me use some of his Battlefield 5 gameplay. It's interspersed with some of my own, but he was kind enough to let me have access to his because I really have run out now. His channel is linked down below in the description. Make sure you go and say hello and drop him a subscribe as well. He makes great Battlefield content. First of all then, the premium model and content distribution. Now, the majority of Battlefield players do not like the premium model, splitting the community into smaller chunks and restricting them from accessing major content like maps, weapons and game modes unless they coughed up some more of their cash. Now this system has been in place since 2011, I think maybe 2012 with Battlefield 3, and finally we're seeing it disappear with Battlefield 5, and it being replaced with an optional, cosmetic only driven microtransaction system. This means all players of Battlefield 5 will be part of one central group that gets access to all future weapons, vehicles, maps and game modes that are produced and released for the game, keeping servers populated and keeping all content made in a good rotation. The optional cosmetic microtransactions are literally just that. They are optional, you don't have to buy them if you don't want to, but that money that's being spent by certain players that want to make their characters look different will be used to drive more content for Battlefield 5. This means that nobody's left out, but if you want to make your character look different, then you can go ahead and do that. Secondly, let's focus on game modes for a minute. Now, DICE in Battlefield 1 made a very controversial change to the way the Conquest game mode was scored, removing the tug-of-war ticket bleed approach and instead implementing a very similar system to the Domination game mode. You no longer needed to hold a majority of flags to have an influence on the score of a match. You only needed to hold one flag or more to do that. This meant the chance of comebacks was significantly reduced because even if you gained control of more flags on the map in later stages of the match, the other team would still be scoring points up to a total of 1,000 because they still had control of a couple of flags. This meant if they were too far ahead, they would still go on to win the game because they're always scoring points up to the maximum of 1,000. Now, I think we can all agree this resulted in a worse experience and also helped DICE validate the inclusion of behemoths, which were touted as a comeback mechanic, but in my view and my experience were mainly there to help market the game to the masses. They were ultimately quite cool, seeing a massive vehicle rolling around the map, but I never really felt they had the effect on the matches that DICE really wanted them to have. Now, in Battlefield 5, DICE is returning the Conquest game mode back to its former glory, re-implementing the majority flag rule, creating a tug of war over the objectives on the map, and allowing comebacks to occur much more regularly. Also, DICE has listened to community feedback on other game modes like Frontlines and Operations, bringing those over from Battlefield 1 into this new game. Frontlines introduced linear tactical play with a 32 player count and Operations encompassed all of the greatness of Battlefield into one massive cooking pot. 
Now, Rush might not be a game mode in Battlefield 5, but it has rather lost its charm since the Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 days. And mentioning behemoths, those will not be returning in Battlefield 5. So here, what you can say is that DICE learnt a lot in Battlefield 1, have made quite a few changes, and Battlefield 5 should be more to the liking of most of the community. Point number three, and this is one of my favourites actually, because it really does show that community feedback does matter. We're going to talk about suppression. Now, it's taken DICE a while to realise that the suppression system they've built and stuck by since Battlefield 3 is really not one that players appreciate all that much, although the idea behind the system, I think, is quite a good one. In Battlefield 1 and previous Battlefield games all the way back to Battlefield 3, suppressing an enemy would apply random gun sway, added recoil and bullet spread to their weapon, meaning that should they decide to return fire, likely they're going to miss. Now this was to force the player being shot to take cover, think about the situation, maybe even relocate before engaging with that enemy again. However, applying external forces to gunfights isn't a good mechanic, when really it's the accuracy of the two players engaging that should decide the outcome of that gunfight. So in Battlefield 5, DICE has finally decided to remove those exaggerated weapon effects from the suppression system, and instead has chosen to focus on refining a visual and audible suppression system. This means that the accuracy and skill of players in the gunfight will be the deciding factor. And that's really, really awesome to say. And it's been feedback from the community for quite some time. It really has been a long time coming, but after multiple iterations, DICE has listened to the community, which is really great to see. Point number four that I want to talk about is the gunplay. Battlefield 1's gunplay I think is widely misunderstood and does actually represent a better system than what was available in previous titles, but there are some fundamental elements that make it less desirable just as much as it is better. The guns themselves are fairly well balanced and they do feel unique from each other, which is exactly what you want, but... The way that bullets were randomly spread across the weapon's cone of fire, and the lack of a visual representation of bullet spread, arguably the reason why most people thought that bullets weren't hitting their target, that made it extremely difficult to read weapons during live matches. And it meant although each weapon in the game was indeed unique and different, they all felt kind of throwaway because you couldn't really master the weapon. There wasn't an ultimate level of control that you could have over that weapon. Now, before the TTK 2.0 patch, the spread increase per shot on medic rifles led them to becoming wildly inaccurate when firing them at their maximum rate of fire, which is exactly not what you were hoping would happen when you chose a medic rifle. You chose them because they were accurate, but you were penalised for using them to their maximum capacity. Now, TTK 2.0 did fix a lot of Battlefield 1's weapon issues, but in my opinion, the gunplay is still not as satisfying as it has been in previous titles, although they did manage to get rid of that meta of all players using the same weapons over and over again. There are, of course, still popular weapons on each of the platforms. I'm not going to deny that, but in general, you didn't see that many people using the same weapon all the time, regardless of the scenario they found themselves in. Now, enter Battlefield 5. Removal of random bullet deviation and the implementation of recoil patterns, a huge reduction in the amount of spread that weapons have, and spread that is still present being transformed into recoil, so each next bullet fired follows that recoil pattern, rather than just jumping around all over the place. Spread and recoil resets faster, allowing you to fully utilise weapons and play them to their strengths. The removal of the sweet spot mechanic on scout rifles, increasing the focus on landing head shots, a renewed focus on aiming down the sights of your weapon rather than adopting a spray and pray mentality, and the list just goes on. Gunplay is one of the systems that's heavily baked into the game from the start, and so changing it mid-life cycle is something that's very difficult to do. Plus, because you hold a gun 95% of the time that you play a battlefield game, if you change something too drastically, players could sort of fall out of favour and become frustrated because weapons don't perform the same as they did the other day before you patched the title. DICE instead chose to remedy the entire 
entire situation with Battlefield 5, and having spent about 5 hours playing the game myself already, I can say at this early stage the gunplay is far, far better and more rewarding overall. I do need some more time testing it, I've only had limited access to a few weapons so far, but from what I've played, I'm excited to get my hands on it again. Number 5, I want to talk about the movement system. Battlefield 1's movement system, in my view, it sought to bind all players of the game to a single set of moves, levelling the playing field and allowing all players to compete fairly against each other. Now this might seem on the face of it a good move to make, but in doing so, DICE removed the ability for more skilled players to produce moves that would allow them to win gunfights and get themselves out of bad situations. The movement system, although very fluid, really didn't feel up to the speed of the gameplay pace, and sometimes you'd hit these invisible, jarring movement barriers where you'd be caught out by the enemy, maybe shot in the back, which is really not fun when you're being restricted by the movement system, something that's beyond your control. The vaulting system in the game was extremely buggy at launch, and it still is today by the way. Sometimes placing you in a prone position behind a fence you intended to vault over the top of, leading you to be shot at and inevitably killed when you're flailing around on the floor. The slide mechanic was an innovative new addition to Battlefield 1, but it was heavily abused at the launch of the game. DICE changed it a little bit and landed with what I thought was a solid fix midway through its first life, but then for some reason DICE decided to nerf it again and restrict it so much that it may as well not be in the game anymore. You now cannot slide sideways or you can barely change direction at all, coming to a complete stop, which massively reduces its effectiveness and intended use, which of course is sliding into cover. So then we look to Battlefield 5, and DICE has made some significant changes to movement and expanded the movement set overall. The slide mechanic, in my limited experience, I believe has been restored to the settings it held after its first patch in Battlefield 1, placing a cooldown after the slide which would reduce the speed and distance that you could slide again, and the angle at which you can slide has been slightly limited. Jump shooting has been reintroduced from Battlefield 4, that allows players to fire their weapons once they've passed the apex of a jump, although at massive spread and recoil increases. The vaulting system was better in the time I spent playing, but it likely still needs more work. I didn't encounter a point where I was placed into prone, which is a good step forwards, although I did still fail to vault over a few things, so that definitely needs to be worked on. And perhaps one of the biggest changes, you can now cancel critical animations like revives, allowing you to escape danger should an enemy appear on you. You're no longer going to be stuck in an animation that you cannot get yourself out of, and that gives you more control of movement as a player. You can now charge through unbroken windows, you can prone backwards and roll 360 degrees whilst you're in prone, you can prone and lead to the sides allowing you to see round objects whilst you're in cover, and you can jump through the air and grab onto ledges and pull yourself up. Plenty of evidence here to suggest that DICE did hear our feedback from Battlefield 1. And number 6, Player Agency. Here I'm talking about customization and control of your characters in Battlefield games. Battlefield 1 was locked down extremely hard when it comes to soldier customization, and this directly conflicted with the expectations of players at the time, when more and more games were offering players the ability to control the looks of their characters, to give the game a more personal feel to each player that was playing it. About as far as we could go was applying different weapon skins, but those being handed out at random via battle packs really meant that we have very little control over what our characters look like during a live match. Even Battlefield 3 and 4 featured more soldier customization than Battlefield 1 did, which made the decision harder to swallow for quite a lot of players of the game. With Battlefield 5, however, players will have much greater freedom to curate a set of soldiers with unique looks and abilities that they can then use on the battlefield. This also applies to vehicles and weapons. The system is modular, allowing for different clothing items on soldiers to be applied and different objects to be placed onto vehicles to apply visual flair. 
The system implemented goes far beyond what I actually expected from DICE to be honest. I thought we'd be limited to full outfit changes, but no. We will have the ability to choose headgear, facial structure, war paints, upper torso, lower torso and boot options, which is awesome. It does come with the caveat that it may well be much harder to distinguish what kind of player you're up against and during the limited time that I've played the game so far, I did find that to be a small issue, whether they were a medic or an assault player for example. But DICE is committed to keeping customization faction specific and will be using different colour palettes and edge lighting to help players understand who it is they're actually fighting. So it comes with some caveats, but you definitely get way more customization control than you have in any previous Battlefield title, let alone Battlefield 1. Now, that's just six high-level points. I'm sure there will be plenty of other changes that we will see in Battlefield 5 that will likely address a lot of concerns from the community coming from Battlefield 1. I mean, even off the top of my head, we know the game will have a live service and that we hope that comes with much greater player progression, keeping it fresh all the time, things you can come back to the game for, things that you can always be achieving. I made this video because I think it's clear to see that DICE do indeed listen to feedback. It's just sometimes we all get a little bit short-sighted and expect massive change to happen instantly. That just isn't going to happen. But over time, and especially with the example of suppression, change does occur. And with Battlefield 5, I really do think we're getting a totally different and revamped approach compared to Battlefield 1. But also, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts today. Is there anything you're particularly looking for from DICE to change for Battlefield 5? Or is there anything you're excited to try that you already know has been changed? Let me know down in the comments section. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications switched on. Click that bell next to the subscribe button and check they are on. That way you won't miss any of my future videos. But thank you very much for watching today and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.